Hi there guys, it's Marie Louise again. Um, I am lucky I get to play around on the Mama Magic um, account again today. And I am playing with one of my favorite people. <laughs> I'm going to be interviewing Debbie from Pure Beginnings. And there we go, she just requested. And I'm super excited because um, we're going to be chatting about skincare. Here go. And more specifically, organic skincare. Hi, Debbie. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Fine, and you? Well, thank you. Sorry, I didn't catch the memo on joining here. So sorry for everyone who started <laughs> live and now we're joining this live. So here we are. We made it. <laughs> No, I saw you guys going live. That's why I sent you a WhatsApp and I was like, no, no, Mama, I, I, you don't need to go live. <laughs> yes, totally. I'm trying to be extra, extra conscientious, but no, here we are. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, we're so happy to have you. How has your day been? Fine. I think when people keep asking how, how are things, I think I, you have to keep saying, great, they're good. We, we are pushing forward. It's a Friday. My kids yeah. are being, they're being, they're somewhere around. So if <laughs> kids or dogs or anything come in and that's just what this is. Um, but it's a Friday. So in our house, it's pizza night. My husband will be making pizza and then the kids will pick a movie. So it's a, it's a good day in our house. How's your day been? Uh, it's been eventful. Um, we kind of have the same Friday routine. We do pizzas and we, yeah, like we watch a movie. Um, I just got back from the ER actually because Ava like bumped her cheek, so I had to quickly, <laughs> I had to quickly oh, no. take it. But it's fine. She's sleeping. Everybody's fine. It's just like it's lockdown, but life goes on. Hey, like when your kid bumps their cheek, you have to go to the doctor. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And is she fine? Is she okay? Yeah, she's fine. She's fine. Okay. She's fine. So I'm. Um, that's why I'm like really excited to now just have a chat with you. So yes, for yes. the people who might not know why I love you so much, can you give them a little introduction? Who you are and your background and mm -hmm. your role at Peer Beginnings? Like, who is Debbie? Why are we talking to you today? <laughs> Yes. Well, that is a good question. Um, no. Yes. So my name's Debbie. I um, am married to my varsity sweetheart and we have three super cute and super loud children. They're all hidden as far away from here as possible now. Um, the, our first two were born overseas um, in Canada and then we had our daughter who was born here in South Africa. They are eight uh, six and turning four in September. So still little and still doing lots of homeschooling here during lockdown. But we had two of our three abroad and that was where our eyes were opened just to the enormous amount of options available when it comes to raising kids and um, skincare and food and just everything. I mean, we were living in Vancouver, Canada, so it's there's just so many options and there's so many different ways and you've given a really long maternity leave so you can really think about how to raise these little people and so that's where our journey began i studied public relations um here in cape town so both my husband and i are originally from cape town and that's yeah where we live now and yeah we were just there for a season and i studied pr and then i studied to become a birth doula in vancouver as well so really loved the birth space and just I think just we've been on a journey throughout our travels and throughout settling back home here and how do we just be more thoughtful and intentional about how we live and how we treat the environment and how we treat ourselves and and so yeah it's an ongoing journey it's definitely we're not getting a lot of it right a lot of the time but yeah that's my that's my background and so now I work for Pure Beginnings I'm a part of their team and I absolutely love what I do and so I manage some of their, um, well, their PR and communications. So it's also really nice to be here today because I'm seeing people join. And I think I, I chat with a lot of people, but I don't know if people know me specifically. So it's lovely to meet you if I've never spoken to you, people joining us. Um, yeah, it's good to be here today. So tell us a little bit um, about how you came to work with Peer Beginnings and also like the story behind Peer Beginnings, how Peer Beginnings kind of came to be. Yeah, so Pure Beginnings started back in 2006 before organic skincare was really a thing 
um, it wasn't really acknowledged as a thing here in South Africa. And so it was started by a husband and wife team, a couple, um, Bruce and Kate Murgordon. And they had recently gotten married and were looking at having kids and, and just looking for avenues and, and, and also what they wanted to do and, and what they wanted to put their hands to. And so Pure Beginnings started as a really small brand and they really did work so hard for so long to have organic skincare be something that is now really valued and really important. But back then, I mean, it's been a very long slug and they're an incredible team to work with. And so I, I met them in returning from Canada and um, I was really good. I had two small kids and just really into this whole way of thinking about living more intentionally and, and slower and being really careful about what I put on my kids and what I feed them. Um, which is much easier um, overseas just because of the option. And so I came back and really wanted to try and figure that out. And I came across the brand and I, um, I was also blogging at the time and just made contact with them and just loved what I saw. Back in Canada when we were there, I was making my own um, baby products, just randomly finding things online. And oh, I was just making like wet wipes with, Castile soap and, and uh, paper towel and just doing all these super greeny things that you would do in Vancouver. And then came back and saw this company that I hadn't remembered from when we'd left Cape Town. I hadn't recognized them and was just so intrigued and so made contact with them. And then the rest is history. So there's very much an awesome organic growth of our relationship. So they're based in Derbs and I work from home in Cape Town. And yeah, so that's our relationship. And it's, yeah, it's been an amazing journey. And I'm just so passionate about what they're doing and the, the opportunities they're providing for families just to, to try and choose better when it comes to skincare. Now, okay, that being said, obviously, we are brand ambassadors for, for Pure Beginnings. And our story, <laughs> our story yes. is very similar to yours. We met Bruce at Mama Magic in a little stall and we were yeah. pregnant. Eliana and you know I was looking for an alternative because I wanted to put the best on my kids skin and at that stage I didn't know what that was so it made sense going to the baby expo and like talking to all these brands and just hearing their their side so yeah organic skincare brand what are the pros of using organic skincare yeah well I mean I think I talk about it so much just from a, a work perspective, I, mean, I think I have to start with asking what aren't the pros? You know, they're just, I, I think my whole, my heartbeat of, and the brands, but specifically just as a mom, like so many moms, I mean, so many moms who are just trying their best. In terms of organic skincare, just nature has provided us with such amazing raw materials to use on our skin. There's no reason we need to be using petrochemicals and mineral oil and um, synthetic ingredients and chemicals and th there's no reason for this to be used on our skin if we don't have to and so I mean nowadays it's amazing because organic skincare is readily available it's it, you know it's it's more popular it's we're in us and other brands or in numerous retailers and and looking at ingredient lists and doing research th there's just there's so much to the benefit from a health from a short-term health perspective to a long-term health perspective to uh, it, it's just it's overwhelming and so yeah I mean yeah I think I go back to why why wouldn't you if you, if you didn't have a, an option I mean or if you had the option why why wouldn't you just the health benefits long term are significant and it doesn't mean going fancy and I mean it could be as simple as putting a natural oil in in your bath water just to nourish your skin it doesn't you know we can be really simple and we can minimize it doesn't need to be huge and extravagant, but just to kind of bring things back down and and learn about what we're buying, what we're using, what you know, to broaden it, what what we're eating, how we're living. Um, yeah, yeah. And also, obviously, questioning and expecting more from brands, um, hmm. and not letting them underestimate the consumers with with ingredients and stuff that they might think we don't know anything about. Yeah, absolutely. We yeah. love people who come and meet us at Mother Magic shows or who email us or chat us on Instagram who are reading ingredient lists and they're asking questions about, you know, where does this come from? Why is this used? And, and unfortunately, until now, a lot of your, um, your cheaper ingredients, they're cheaper for a reason. And when things are mass produced and cheap, and, and so 
it is there's just this 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 learning and understanding and educating and then making the you know the best decision that you can make for yourself so yeah Okay. So Warren, hello Warren. He actually just also said he, he loved, he loves how wide the range is. And I mean, that's true. Mm -hmm. Like caters, not just, it's not just a baby range. A lot of people might think it's just, you know, about three yeah. types, but it actually is a huge extensive range. Can you maybe tell us about the products that the range offers for the entire family? Yeah. So it started off as a baby range and we're, we're most well known as a baby range but it does extend and and like Warren's saying it you know even in within the baby range you know we started with the with the wash and the wax and then bum cream and and, and now to go into insect repellents and sun cream and a chest rub we really are trying to find gaps in the market where people are looking for a more natural organic alternative and, and the then we do go into kids sorry and the probiotic range, you've got the probiotic yes, range. Yes, absolutely, yeah. So more specialized ranges, so the probiotic range, for which we recommend for newborn babies, for premature babies, for skin sensitivities. And so that was an amazing recent development with loads of study um, done on the skin microbiome and the skin barrier and how to really feed and nourish the microbiome. But then it goes into kids with bubble with bubble baths and their washes and, um, like I said, insect repellent sun cream. And then up into what we call our organic care range, which is, yeah, not many people know about it. And they put some pieces all over, but we've got deodorants, so natural um, roll-on deodorants. And then we've got toothpaste and shampoo and conditioner and shave cream and a body wash and a lotion, which are amazing products. But they are a little bit more undercover than the kids and the baby ranges. Okay. Yeah. Now, going into winter now, skin tends to dry out. Our skins mm. are more sensitive. Um, what advice would you be able to give us in terms of like skincare for winter? What changes should we be making? What should we be looking out for specifically? What like two or three products do we need to use daily? Yeah. So that's the thing. A lot of people in winter, they struggle with, um, trans epidermal water loss, which is really that drying out of the skin. And so we, I mean, obviously we recommend a lot of moisturizing and a lot of nourishing your skin, but even things such as um, not taking too hot a bath or a, or a shower that encourages yeah. like the loss of water. So rather keep it a little bit warmer if you are going to have a nice bath, because who doesn't love a bath in winter? Um, it's put it's natural... warm. Yeah, warm. So not piping hot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, to hop into a warm bath with some, with like a natural oil, just to moisturize your skin, obviously hydration is key. And then even things like if you do, if you are using heaters to then try and just counteract that with a humidifier in a room or just something to keep the moisture up. Obviously we, we love eucalyptus. And so it's lovely to keep a, a diffuser in a room that's just diffusing eucalyptus and water. And so to just try and keep that moisture up in the air. So it's not being pulled out of your skin. But yeah, so lots of awesome little tip, tips. But in terms of us, I mean, we've got, a, we've got an amazing hydrating body lotion as part of our organic hair range. And then um, an awesome baby lotion. And even our bum cream. Our bum cream is, a, is an incredible therapeutic bum cream. It's thick. It's great for so many things other than just bum cream. It's good for um, cuts and scrapes and cuticles and all sorts of um, little rashes or irritations or anything like that. And so... Uh, that's a huge one that we recommend if you have particularly dry skin. And of course, our probiotic range for babies. There's, a, there's an amazing fragrance-free, specifically, um, yeah, just really, really good for newborns. And so that's also awesome for winter. Okay, so winter, it's key to just like try and keep as much moisture locked inside your skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I actually didn't know this, but apparently you have a farm, a farm to table business as well, where you support local farmers. Obviously you support local, um, Pure Beginnings is a local brand. And um, a lot of the times when you work, you work with other local brands. So supporting mm. local core to the Pure Beginnings value. Now, can you tell us why this is so important um, to you guys specifically and also to you personally? Yeah, I think, I mean, so my husband and I had this opportunity 10 years ago now to go and live in Vancouver, like I said earlier, and he studied and um, we just went on this amazing journey of being able to have this gift of time where he learned and I worked 
to just be able to think through things. And one of the things that we just gradually kind of gravitated towards was trying to eat food from a, a close by farm and trying to eat food from um, like meat that was just sustainably and ethically raised and trying to um, appreciate, you know, create this farm to table lifestyle. And like I said, it's, it sounds great in theory and it is, but it is also really hard to actively work out, especially when there's so many obstacles. And so coming home, we, and that's why I started blogging way back when, was to just process what we had learned in another culture and so excited to return to Cape Town, to our families and to our, to our friends and work that through. And so try and process that. And, and part of, you know, with me and small kids, Pure Beginnings was a big part of that. But mm -hmm. at the same time, it was what were we feeding our kids and, and how we just crazy little things that we would never have thought of before. You almost need to be pulled out of a culture and live somewhere else to just have these things make sense. And so I joined what we now call, they're, they're quite popular around Cape Town, a good food club, where it really is a group of people coming together to, to source local food and produce, uh, as well as um, body care and household care. And so to try and reduce the chemical burden on our bodies, the, the toxic you know, kind of the ness around us and to to support that family business or that you know a local bread maker or whoever it might be and so as that grew and as this kind of unraveled i started one in our suburb where we live and so it's it's also a monthly buying club so you place an order and then we place orders with the local farmers and the food gets delivered and then our community comes together and grabs their order and so it's a project that i run on the side with my mom and with just wonderful supplies. Of course, Pure Beginnings is involved in that, and, but it's just a, a way of making good products easily accessible to our community. So it's very community focused. And it's, yeah, it's just a wonderful group of people who are trying to think about how differently to spend their money and how differently to treat the environment. And, um, and yeah, it's really communal, which is beautiful. Oh, wow. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, interesting to me that a lot of um, the history of Pure Beginnings stems from, from family and Bruce and his wife and the whole business started with them wanting to start a family. And a lot of the things that you are speaking about is also once again, surrounded by um, families and how when you became parents and you had kids, you started questioning almost a, a way of living better, to have a better mm. life and more not just for yourself, but for your kids and your environment. So you all are also a doula. Yes. <laughs> so a woman of many hats. Yeah. Practicing or, or is that something from, from your other season? <laughs> it, was very, it was a very big part of our other season. And then coming home, I had a six-month-old. And, and so that was just sort of put on the back burner for a while. And then... I mean, I just love, I, I had incredible birth experiences again, pulled out of my culture into another one. And then I, I um, just wanted to share the, the, the empowering experience I had in birth. I just really wanted to share that with other women. And so I have been practicing in Cape Town until very recently now with the lockdown and the limitations on um, birthing teams in hospitals. And then also in Cape Town with the um, lack of support for midwifery led care in Cape Town specifically. Um, I work very closely with midwives and love midwives and now yeah, they, they aren't able to practice within private hospitals. And so it's been challenging, but I, I act absolutely love it and and it doesn't you know to me as a doula I'm really passionate about birth but it doesn't matter how you birth it doesn't matter your experience everybody's experience is so unique and so beautiful to me it matters how a woman feels in that time of of birthing be it a planned cesarean and you know a natural a water birth a home birth it's just to have people around you who believe in you and who can support you and empower you that's totally where my heart is so um it is a big juggle with working and three kids and trying to stay on top of everything and so I definitely I, I tiptoe into it and then I give myself a bit of a break and then I can't help myself and then I tiptoe back into it and so yeah but it's a total heart project um from me 
Do you have any advice or tips for moms currently pregnant or new moms about to have babies? Just like just tips or advice for birth, whatever their birth plan may be, lockdown or yeah. not even lockdown. Because I mean, it's, it's already scary. I can't even imagine like with lockdown as an extra issue. Um, mm. Do you have any advice for them? Yeah, I think it speaks to birth itself is so unpredictable and so um, it's just, it's its own experience. And so I think for pregnant moms out there, I just want to say that it is a beautiful experience and not to fear the experience and not to fear it um, and to hold it lightly if you do have a birth plan. And I, I love birth plans, but to hold them lightly, especially in this time when you imagine something and it might not be what you imagined and the fear of not having your partner there and them being there or not. or And so just to, I think, just embrace the season that we're in and 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 so much about um, just going through the process of birth is just is just is just flowing with it. And and so now in the season, it is so different. And so we just have to go with people we trust and to surround yourself with people who you trust and who um, you feel have heard you and people who are empowering to you I think that is a huge um yeah that's a, that's a huge one it's just to be surrounded by people who who you do feel empowered by and yeah who just who believe in you I mean I think that just changes the experience regardless of how the actual birth takes place but yeah my, my heart goes out to everybody who's having babies at the moment because it is such a bizarre time and it's not what anybody imagined and for people who've had the most well-to-do plans, I actually got a message today from one of the moms who I was going to support, showing me a picture of her baby, um, and I wasn't able to be there at the birth to support them. And, and just to, to try and not fight kind of what is happening at the moment and to just roll with it and be easy on yourself, go easy on yourself, and just try and enjoy it and embrace it as much as you can. Now, another thing about birth, newborn babies, that moms may not think of, I remember with our firstborn, your baby gets born and then almost like the next day, somebody comes and tells you, okay, let's go give your baby a bath. And you're yeah. like, okay, so, you know, yeah. you don't know what you're doing. But yeah. actually, I like with my first, I didn't know this. You were like, okay, let's go. Let's go have a walk. But then with my second, I read up on skincare and especially baby skin. And I actually realized that um, maybe not bathing your baby, especially a winter baby, would be beneficial to their skin. Can you maybe tell us a little bit more about um, like not maybe um, jumping into like ba bathing your baby and then a lot of moms might want to know, but what do you do? Like if there's like blood on your baby, like yeah, what, yeah, you, look, newborn skin, how can you best protect it during, especially the first couple of weeks of their lives? Yeah, absolutely. And you like me, I mean, you just, you're doing the best with what you have at the time and you learn as you go. And so yeah. even with us, with our third, it was like this competition as to how long we could not bath her for, <laughs> you know? Whereas with our <laughs> eldest, it was like, quick, wash him, get, just wrap yeah. him up and give him, you know, yeah. so I can cuddle. But with, yeah, with our daughter, we were like, oh, sorry, what did you say? And they already do. You like, you want to bathe them and make them smell like the baby lotion or whatever, yeah. but they already smell so good. Totally, totally. And the baby smell I is know. such a, it's like a figment of our imagination. It is, there is such a big thing made out of a baby smell and babies are incredible. And so what we say is too, and it's, you know, this is backed up by World Health Organization stuff. I mean, but when babies are born, they've got an incredible layer of vernix on them. And it's that white kind of creamy stuff. And usually, you know, especially as a first time mom, you just, it's quite strange and it's sticky and that is nature's perfect more yeah you want to like wipe get it off, off and give your bub a little bit of a cuddle oh and now when i look at at pictures of moms who've got babies with vernix i mean it is just it's nature's perfect moisturizer it, it is everything the baby needs and you just want to rub that in you don't i mean of course sometimes you need to wipe their face and just make sure that you know eyes mouth nose everything but you don't need to wash that off you don't need to rub that off it's it is ideal and it's the best for it is it really is nature's perfect moisturizer and and exactly what you're saying there is no need whatsoever to quickly bath your baby your baby's not dirty toddlers get dirty 
babies are born and if you if you wrap them up and you rub that in i mean their skin is so is so pure and warm and precious that you you don't and it's i mean it's been within you growing exactly how it should and now that it's out in the world there's no reason to put anything on it that could be too strong or harmful or you want ultra mild washes um, ideally fragrance free. There's no reason to be putting a fragrance on your baby. Most fragrances that they aren't derived from organic essential oils are synthetic perfumes and fragrances, which are chemicals. And so you, there's no reason to put that on your baby's brand new skin. Um, you just, they, yeah, every now and then they'll get a bit of like what we used to call cheese, like in their neck, they'll get like a little bit of skin in like the neck rolls, or the wrist rolls, and you just yeah, yeah, wipe yeah. them out. But I think a lot of moms, when they have a, their firstborn, they sit in the hospital and then they want to learn. And so the nurse comes in and offers to bath. And then you think, oh, I should learn this because I've never bathed a newborn before. Yeah, yeah. Um, and nurses can tell you how to do that without actually bathing your baby. And bathing your baby is not, there's no right way to do it. Um, but yeah, to, to use the mildest products to use. I mean, we have that oh. probiotic range specifically for newborns. Well, often should you bath your baby when you start bathing them? Like, is it necessary to do it like every day? Like, can you no. do it? No, not at one? all. <laughs> like, yeah, not at all. I mean, when you feel, you feel the need, when you feel a little bit of skin collecting or you feel, especially if, they, if you're breastfeeding or if they, if they spill some milk or, um, or formula or whatever, and you feel like you need to just wipe and get, I mean, you could wipe them down and that's good enough. So... I know for, for lots of mums, especially new mums, you want to try and establish a bit of a routine and often a bath becomes a part of that routine and, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I think that's when bathing becomes this daily thing because you're trying to get them into, you know, you give them a nice warm bath, you feed them, you change them, you rock them, and then you put them down. And so it becomes a part of a daily routine. Whereas they definitely don't need to be bathed every day. Like, like I say to moms at shows all the time, toddlers get dirty. They, they, are, they get dirty. Yeah. Babies aren't dirty. And so, so you really don't want to strip um, their, their, their skin barrier. You don't want to use anything harsh. They've got amazing natural skin oils that okay. you, want, you don't want to, to overstimulate. And you, you just, you, their skin is amazing. You, almost, you just want to leave it. For as long as you can until you really feel that it's necessary yeah are there any benefits to washing little ones with only cream because i know a lot of people have advice if like your baby has very sensitive skin to leave out soaps and only wash with like certain creams um is that is that a good tip for moms that maybe have kids with very very sensitive skins or is it actually doing yeah <laughs> i i think yeah i think it's, it's entirely personal preference, but I, I think it's got to do with what's in that cream. So okay. for, I mean, I, when, when my, and the reason how I got into looking at this world of natural and organic skincare was when my eldest back in Vancouver developed a really bad bum rash and nothing got rid of it except um, clay powder. And it was a new thing that arrived in my midwife and she was like, just try this. And I tried like medications. I tried all sorts of stuff. And it was this clay powder and this calendula that actually cleared it up. And that opened up my world to what was this? Because it just changed overnight. And looking at how do I go forward? Because this is what I this is what I need. This is what I want to use. And so I had loads of people just saying, you know, even with um, with when I was cleaning his bum, was just use water. Use water and a towel. Don't even use, you know, if you've got your super extra sensitive wipes. If you look at the ingredient list, which is what we encourage so many people to do, if you're seeing words like perfume or fragrance that you, those are alarm bells for, especially if you've got sensitive skin, you really want to, you want to minimize, you want to rein it in. You don't want any excess happening. And so that's why specifically we created the probiotic range or pure, pure beginnings we created the probiotic range because it's got prebiotics and probiotics. It takes into consideration the skin microbiome and how to build the skin microbiome. Um, and so really to help skin flourish. And so you don't want any fragrances. You don't want any harsh surfactants. You don't want anything that's going to disrupt the skin barrier or change the pH of the skin. You, you, yeah, I think ingredient watching and ingredient reading really is key when it comes to 
what you're using, especially with sensitive skin, which is such a big question because it's such a, a it's a big issue for so many moms out there. Okay, so so you you've mentioned ingredient watching quite a bit. So obviously that's a, a big uh, you, pure beginnings are big advocates of informing yourself. So what would be the main ingredients that you would say are warnings? Like what are the red flag ingredients mm. that you definitely not be putting on your family's skin? Yeah. Well, you know, the, I'll, I'll answer the question now, but I think it's really hard because when you look at the back of an ingredient list, you're seeing all these big words and some of them are brilliant because they are the, the botanical name for the specific ingredient or um, oil or whatever it might be. And then you see something that's really similar that is just terrible. So for us, you know, things, things that you don't want to be using are, are mineral oil and petrochemicals and um, SLS, so sodium lauryl sulfate. You don't want to be using your um, phthalates or parabens if you see anything like that. Any kind of codes. Are, are a little bit concerning, your perfume and your fragrance, especially for sensitive skin. Um, lots of things that have a fragrance, it doesn't, you know, fragrance is tricky because you get synthetic fragrance and then you get nature's derived essential oil fragrance. So they are those two differentiated. You can differentiate between those two. But um, yeah, those kinds of things, the, the parabens, the SLS, the mineral oil and the petrochemicals, you... They, they are just they're better, they're better options out there than using that on your skin. Yeah. Well, you've touched on fragrance and perfumes. Now, obviously, Pure Beginning smells great. So, mm. <laughs> yeah. Pure Beginning, sorry, I almost fell off my chair. <laughs> so, Pure Beginning would be using the natural fragrances that you are speaking about. Because that, that is safe mm. to then use. Whereas a synthetic fragrance, that is what you might be reacting to. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So we only use um, essential oils for fragrances. So it, so we when we talk about fragrance, we're talking about pure natural fragrance. We're not talking about synthetic fragrances, which which are created, um, you know, and and are and add to the chemical burden. So in everything that we're saying here, when it comes to washing and um, creams and hydrating, we really want to take the chemical burden off of the skin. And, and when we look at society as a whole, in terms of what we eat, in terms of Wi-Fi, in terms of um, artificial lighting, I mean, everything, we, we are, we're living in such a fast paced, um, kind of, you can decide how long your days are by switching on lights. You're not living by those kind of rhythms of the moon or anything like that. And so, so we are, we are really surrounded by a lot of chemicals and yeah. what, without these chemicals, we're really trying to take the burden off of the skin, which is such a big organ of our bodies. And for little kitties, there's no need to have them feel the chemical burden, whether it comes out, um, you know, in long-term health or short-term health, and maybe nothing's ever picked up or, or nothing's ever a problem. We just want to reduce the chemical burden on our skin and on our family's skins. And is it possible for somebody who maybe, maybe there's somebody that's brand new to organic skincare. They've been using whatever they've been using for ages, but they might be interested in switching over. Um, mm. Obviously, like your skin, would your skin be able to kind of detoxify itself or are you already sitting with long-term, you know, issues that can't be rectified? Or would making a lifestyle change now still be beneficial? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I mean, there's, there's always a new day to make a better decision. And I mean, that can be applied to anything. It can be applied to homeschooling your three kids when you just want to rip your hair out. And it can be applied to, you know, we can, we can always choose to make one small change. It doesn't need to be everything. And that's, that's also what we want to, we want to, we're, we're all moms trying to do the best and none of us are perfect. And we're just, any small change that you make helps in the long run. And so there's no, um, there's no concern. I mean, we can just, we can try and do the best that we can in terms of some, some products. So one of our really popular products from the organic care range, the deodorant, 
that there's almost this detoxing process that needs to happen when you've been using a deodorant with aluminium that kind of seals your your pores to then switch into a more natural deodorant and even kind of adult hair care there there is definitely a bit of a process that needs to happen because it's it's a different product and you can't expect it to give you the same results immediately as what your current product is because you're dealing with two different it's not apples and apples. And so there are yeah. certain things that can take a while to to just become used to because they, they are different, look different, um, respond different. But absolutely, I mean, the long-term effects are incredible and it's so much healthier. And then even just, um, yeah, just those very small changes, all of those added together, really, they're, they're just a better, yeah, it's a better decision to make. And tell me, like, obviously with these changes, like you mentioned, with, I remember when we switched over to um, organic, like, deodorants, you, had, I don't remember, it was like a clay <laughs> detox that you had to, like, I can't even remember what it was, but it was something <laughs> that you had to apply. And um, with, with Pure Begin, you've got a website and you've got a blog. Do you offer support for people to help lead them into, like, these lifestyle changes and how to make it easier? Yeah, absolutely. So our most recent, our most recent blog post on the on the deodorants. Now that we're talking about them, we really did talk you through what you can experience because we also don't want people to buy the product and use it for two days and say this is not working. <laughs> it, it will work. We, there is just that moving across period, and so absolutely, there's loads of information on the blog, and. Okay. Of course, you can email us questions. If you have any questions, if you've got a concern about something you're using and you're not sure about it, or, I mean, we, a huge heart behind Pure Beginnings is to try and educate. And so we are just, we're hoping to steer people in the right direction. It doesn't mean that you need to buy everything that we make. It doesn't mean that you only need to eat organic food. It just means that we're trying to, we're trying to educate and we're trying to answer questions or, or nudge people in the right direction so that in 10 years time, they, they, they're not sitting with a, a health issue, which they didn't even know about way back when could be one. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, please come to us for any, if you have any questions or any thoughts or we're so open to conversation and to feedback and to, to wrestling through this stuff together. We're all on this journey together. Okay, so, but so you guys, you guys are obviously a great um, source of information for people. And then you've got your ambassadors, which are also um, people that are usually very passionate about also living clean. And then yeah. what other like sources can people, do you have other sources that you can re recommend where people can go and reference, find references for organic living or skincare or just a, a more intentional approach? Like I know um, I've got an app, the EWG app. Okay, it's not yeah. as effective as Africa yet, but are there any mm -hmm. sources people can visit or reference where they can just get more information on organic skincare and organic living? Yeah, there are so many, there's so many websites and there's so much information out there. I think a value to us, and often it's quite boring to the consumer, but a value to us really is to look for accreditations. So accreditations are quite boring in and of themselves, but if you, you know, if a brand like Pure Beginnings is, is recognized and um, EcoCert approved, it means that their, their products, their ingredient lists, their manufacturing, their raw materials, their packaging even is audited by EcoCert International. And so I think when it comes to looking at what to buy and how do we trust the brand that we're wanting to buy or, or read their ingredient list, re those certifications that, that kind of the beauty without cruelty, the vegan accredited, I mean, they, like I said, they, we often write about them because we're so excited about them, but they aren't always very interesting for a consumer. But I yeah. think for, for consumers to, to look out for those, to identify those, so, so that you know that it's a trusted source. And often those accreditations come with a great deal of paperwork and a, lo a, long, um, a long journey to get to them to that point. But that really is a way in which you can look at a product and believe in what they're saying because they've taken the time to go through this entire process, which is audited spontaneously all the time to make sure that the product you're getting is what you really believe it is to be. Okay. Okay. So, mm. so those are really good ones to keep an eye on. 
Absolutely. EcoCert is the global leader in organic certification. And so um, Pure Beginnings was really proud to be the first baby and kids skincare brand in South Africa to, um, to certify with EcoCert and some have followed since. But it is, it, you, we need these international bodies to, to hold everyone accountable as to what they're saying a product is and to trust. Because, I mean, credibility and trust really is what we have to stand on and we have to hold to um, it with the products that we're talking about and the products that we are formulating. Okay. Okay, well, thank you so much, Debbie. I think that is kind of what we wanted to talk about. I don't know if anybody maybe has a question. I'm just going to scroll down and just check if anybody, if we maybe missed a question. I saw a lot of hellos and... Um, also one of the mamas mentioning that she can't wait to use pure beginnings on her little one. Um, which awesome. is, yeah, that's always nice to hear. But, um, if anybody has a question for you, please guys pop them in here now. Um, or if you even have a skincare question that mm. you've been wanting the answer for, if we don't know, it, <laughs> mama yeah. magic will get an expert to, to get back to you. But yeah. And, and please, I mean, you can email us on info at purebeginnings.zza or through the website or here on Instagram. We're so happy to, to, to meet you and to chat things through and to try and, um, yeah, walk this journey together. We're all on this. Like I said, we're all on this together. Yes, definitely. And I think it's, it's wonderful to have seen a local brand start, like you said, in Durban, um, as a as parents that wanted the best for their kids and it's grown into this beautiful brand that we all know and um, are people beginning selling overseas yeah so the, we are in the european market yeah yeah so up, um mm, yeah so up in europe um it's a small percentage of our of our business but yeah we we have to keep looking at every opportunity to try and keep a, a i think I think deep down we still feel like quite a small little brand and and so it's hard to yeah I mean it's just to see it grow from little seeds to what it is now is really exciting and every new step is really exciting um for the team and for the family and yeah we still see ourselves as a small a small local brand and we just have to try and keep keep going because it's 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 not an easy industry to be in and to continue to do things at a, at a level that we are happy with is, is expensive. But we, yeah, so we have to keep growing keep and keep expanding. Yeah, you, you have to probably also keep on innovating. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And you'll see, we'll see quite a bit of that this year. So keep your eyes out. Okay, we have, let me just, we have one question here. Okay, apparently it smells amazing. It says, my daughter started to develop a dry patch on her scalp since the beginning shampoo and body wash. Um, is it something to uh, wor work about? Maybe I think it's worry about. Okay, it smells they developed a small dry patch? Yeah, I think a small dry patch on their scalp. Hmm. So um, my first thoughts are, I don't know if that is maybe, uh, how it old is she? Yeah. yeah, it could be it it's probably dependent on her age. Um, yeah, uh, Rosia, am I saying your name correctly? I'm sorry if I'm not. Um, can you maybe let us know the age of your little one? Because that mm. might help give a better, um, better advice. Uh, okay, it was yeah. really. <laughs> um, okay, but and the say, age? Yeah. If it it is, very well could be cradle cap. And cradle cap can go on for quite a while. Um, my kids, my boys both had it for quite a while. And that's very natural. It's 16 months. Okay. Have, and now maybe I should chat with this person off because uh, we're going to have this delay. But it could very possibly be, be cradle cap, which is very common and very, very normal for lots of kids to get at different ages. And we just suggest for cradle cap, just using a natural oil. We have a, a baby a massage oil, but any kind of natural oil to just rub to moisturize and then to kind of, if it do the, if it's dry flakes, to just kind of gently comb those away. Um, cradle cap can definitely come and go. And it's, it's really just your sebaceous glands in your scalp um, releasing oils and then sometimes they get trapped. And so you just need to kind of work through that, getting that, finding that balance. But that's, I mean, it's so common for so many kids. We just recommend using a, an oil to kind of help just just um, 
Yeah, with a, with a comb to just kind of get rid of that dry hair. Or, and, I mean, well, not dry hair, dry scalp. So, and cradle cap, it would look a little bit flaky. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but if it's red or anything like that, if it's red yes. or it's like bumps or so, it's more of a flash, then... Yeah, so if it's that, red or angry, then yeah. I would suggest just washing with water especially for a, a 16 month old, I'm not quite sure how long the hair would be, but just washing with water. Like I said, if there's ever any concern, you're welcome. If there's any, if there's ever any concern is to just bring it back down. That's, that's kind of the part, just use some water, use something really mild um, and just see how it responds. Um, would it help? I would, like, I would imagine. Sorry? Like, would, it help? would it help putting like bum cream on your baby's head? Cause I put the bum on everything. <laughs> so. Yeah. Absolutely. With, okay. Yeah, okay. and that's an antiseptic, and it's a like it's a it's a it's an incredible bum cream. And you can yeah, like I said earlier, you can use that anything. You can use it on your lips, on chapped cuticles, on scrapes, on on I mean grazes, on bruises, on on absolutely anything. And so dry skin, absolutely. I used to put it on my daughter's. She used to have really dry skin, and I used to put it on her elbows and on her knees before bed. It's a it's a wonderful wonderful product. So try that if you've got that. Okay. Okay, well, thank you so much, Debbie. I think we have come to the end of our live. It was so much fun. I hope yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's so nice to chat with you. It's always so nice to chat with you. We should do this more. Yes. But off of camera. <laughs> <laughs> On the camera, off the camera. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Um, you, you have to get pizzas and movies ready, and I have to do the same. But yeah. is it still raining in Cape Town? Not, no. It was raining this morning and I went out for a run because it said that it wasn't going to rain and then we were all caught in the rain. Um, so it's not now, but it has, we've had an incredibly rainy past week, which is always lovely for Cape Town because we always welcome the rain, but um, not in the morning when we're only allowed out. So <laughs> yeah, no, so it's blue skies now. Yes. And you guys, are you warming up? No, it's raining in Cape Town, so it's freezing in Pretoria. You make it cold. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully the rain will stop and then you guys can warm up. So. Okay, but thank you so, so much. Thank you for telling us more about the brand and just sharing the products and your knowledge and your passion. And yeah, also just giving us so much insight into, I think, the heart of, of Pure Beginnings because I've always loved the brand because it's not a brand that tells you we are the best, therefore you must use us. But it's more a brand that wants to just show you that there's a different way of life that may be better suited for you and that really just wants to teach everybody. So thank you so much for just doing that today and for spending yeah. all with me. <laughs> well, thank you so much for the opportunity. And like I said earlier, it's so good to, to I, ha I can't see faces, but to have people join us who, um, who are following us and we really are appreciative of your support and your, yeah, your support of the business and for joining us in these conversations. It's really good to be here. So thanks so much for having me. Yes, and thank you so much for everybody that was, that was popping in and out, that asked questions, that just left a comment or gave us a heart. Thank you for yeah. also. I hope that everybody has a good evening and that the kids all let everybody sleep in late tomorrow morning. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you there. Okay, Debbie, have a nice evening. Bye. Thanks. You too, Marilouise. Bye.